Hey guys, welcome to part three. We're comparing John Carpenter's Halloween with uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween. And where we last left off, we were talking about the film's visuals. Uh, Seth and I were talking about um, that Rob Zombie's was very like much like a heavy metal concert video kind of a feeling. A lot more uh, gritty, more blood and gore imagery. Uh, kind of focuses on the lower portion of society like... Uh, the Rob Zombie one had more criminals, it had more hookers, more like people working in strip clubs, uh, a lot of high school dropouts. Um, he also had a, a darker Michael Myers look, like I explained before. Uh, cracks on the mask, uh, more faded out than the previous one. Uh, keeps blood on the outfit. And one thing I didn't note before is I kind of liked um, that Michael Myers had these collection of masks in his insane asylum room. And if you look closely, some of the masks are actually like paper mache versions of the original mask and on one, one portion of the desk and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm not 100% certain, but I think there's also a paper mache version of the clown mask from the original Halloween. So mm -hmm. I'm not 100% certain on that one. But mm -hmm. um, And I explained how John Carpenter's vision was much better because he really gave us the impression that you were watching Halloween time in the 70s and that... Um, People were celebrating it. You know, he got a, a realistic interpretation of what people do on Halloween. Um, and I'm going to let Seth talk about his concluding thoughts of the visuals. Um, visuals for me in this film. Um, or both films in this case. I guess for both films. Uh, 1978, or uh, John Carpenter's version. Um, he did less is more. And uh, like art, uh, compared to uh, filmmaking, it worked tremendously. Um, and when I say visuals, um, even down to Michael Myers, you know, ghost, pale, white face mask, um, you know, that definitely got, you know, the creepiness factor, which is really cool. So, um, but, you know, um, not, not just, you know, from the you know, Michael Myers mask, but down to the atmosphere, um, how they were able to use, uh, um, fake leaves, um, in the springtime to actually represent the fall. In California, I thought that was really. And they weird. had to collect all the and leaves, they had, whatever they. When they were I thought that done was actually pretty interesting. They had, they had, they had to re. Because re they could, they couldn't afford to make new ones. Yep. Yeah. Because of well, of course, their production, you know, the budget was so low. So, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, just from from at atmosphere to costumes to. Um, also, on the scenes where where like Lori and her friends are just talking down the street, mm -hmm. those were their actual street clothes. They couldn't afford mm -hmm. new clothes for the, the actors and actresses. And so. it was cool because. Uh, that just kind of proves my point with the, well with uh, John Carpenter's version. It just felt more real. Mm -hmm. you, you felt like there's like were come, actual come, come, to, come to the set with you your clothes like, on and make sure you're not marketing anything. You felt like and they, then you're fine. You felt like they yeah. just got done with school. They're just walking out on the side on the sidewalk, going home, and all of a sudden this guy just pops out of the bush and starts looking at him. It's like, wait, who is that? And it's like, oh, Lori, dear, he <laughs> wants to ask you out on a date. <laughs> <laughs> and even though that did happen in the Rob Zombie one. They were actually in a library when um, when Lori saw Michael staring at her through the window, um, and even though they had the whole Does thing Michael where Michael really need to be in a library. <laughs> no, he's Is not. He he's not. In, he's not in the library. He's they're looking through the window and he's by a tree. Oh, okay. And when when Lori looks away, Michael isn't there yeah. like in the, the Carpenter version. They did the same thing in uh, John Carpenter's version, except um, Lori was in class, mm -hmm. and of course, like you know, and this time she was in the library instead of the class. Yeah, yeah. I was like Lori. Pay attention. Yeah. Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about, guys, is... Uh, did you want to skip musical score? Or did you want to... um, yeah, okay. did you want to? Yeah. Um, well, actually, let's make it brief. But, yeah, really brief. Um, in the musical score, uh, musical score-wise, you guys, with these films, I thought John Carpenter did a much better job. And what's cool about John Carpenter, too, also, is he only had one day to make the musical score for this movie. Uh, and that's because... Uh, they, they had fewer days to make the movie. Uh, he focused more on the days of actually making the film over making the music for the film. Uh, I just liked how it was very simplistic, very clever. Um, teens actually had to cover their ears um, throughout the film when this first came out because one of the producers said that uh, kids thought it was too scary that as soon as they cover their ears, mm -hmm. they don't have to be as scared anymore because they don't have to listen to the music while the scary scene was going on. So that's just further proof of how scary some of the scenes are just by the music alone. Um, and I think just to this day, whenever people, like, even if you don't have Halloween playing on your screen, you have it playing like a CD player, people mm -hmm. are like, oh, okay, that's the Halloween score. They're mm -hmm. not going to say that's 
that's John Carpenter practicing. They're going to say that's the Halloween score. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought it was really cool of actually how, you know, how many, like, you know, number of days, you know, like Tom said, it was like five days, you know, how Oh, he had, little, to, make, he had to make it in one day. Oh, what, was it one day? He had to make the oh, score I thought it was five. I, don't know, no, no, no. I, I don't know how but long anyway, it was. It was just so yeah. little, he, you know, a little time he had to make it. But it was kind of cool because actually how he, how he learned to make this uh, when he was a child. I'm um, like, you know, how he was able to, um, you know, get rhythm and beats. You know, I guess his dad, Tom's like, um, he would just, you know, get... He gave him a pair of bongs. Was it was like, it was, I think, yeah, like, bongs, like, da 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 And so anyways, um, from what his father taught him, um, he ended up actually just using that and transitioned it to piano, mm-hmm. which I thought was kind of neat. Also, guys, with the Rob Zombie one, because he is a heavy metal, heavy metal musician, it is what was quite clear by, before the film even came out that there was going to be some kind of heavy metal aspect of the of the score. Um, Halloween 6 tried to incorpor- incorporate heavy metal and did a horrible job. Uh, but I actually felt Rob Zombie, on the scenes when it was appropriate, the heavy metal actually added his own touch to the movie in some ways. Um, even though he could have added more of himself into the score, um, like for example, he, I think instead of using light keys on the piano, he uses heavier keys than John Carpenter did in certain scenes. Mm-hmm. Um, I felt that Rob Zombie could have added his own touch. I mean, maybe, maybe do a similar score, but don't do the exact same score as before. No, John Carpenter yeah. still got credit in Rob Zombie's version. He, right? he got credit he for doing the too. original theme. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, and I think they did that throughout the whole series too. Um, he also did the score for Halloween 3, which is not even a Michael Myers story. I think he did the score for that, too. Mm-hmm. Um, but, yeah, I just felt Rob Zombie could have done more of his touch. I mean, it was one of those things where he was like, well, people already like the score, so I'm just going to use the one that they <coughs> like. So <clears throat> I didn't like how he, he, he got lazy with the score in some ways. Mm-hmm. What do you think, Seth? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think he definitely did get really lazy. And, uh, you know, me only seen this film once. It was basically uh, John Carpenter's uh, music rehashed, except um, instead of having like the, you know, the high pitch, you know, creepy sounds like you know, or the piano sound in the background, you have this, you know, more, you know, heavy, added to what John John Carpenter had already created. So it was, it wasn't anything new that we already uh, experienced, except it was supposed to be a little more heavier, a little more real, and uh, of course that's just Rob Zombie style. So. And then next, guys, I was actually undecided on this one, too, because um, I thought both casts did a really well, good job portraying Laurie Strode's friends. Um, we're going to talk about, you know, Laurie Strode's friends next. Um, I thought PJ Soul, I think her name was Nancy Loomis, who played um, the teenager friends of Laurie Strode. Uh, I thought the original, they were much more recognizable, much more relatable, as certain teenagers are at that time period. Uh, they actually had to go back and add in the word totally whenever PJ Souls talked because back in the day she always said totally at the end of the sentence. And it was kind of cool because actually um, when they showed this film, it was when, it, you know, uh, when an audience uh, were able to see this film, um, anytime she would say totally, of course, then the audience would actually follow up and say totally. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the, uh, I kind of liked the spunky attitude of the Nancy Loomis character. Um, she just, whenever her and Lori were talking about what they would do later that night with the kids that they were babysitting, she was kind of like, you know, this this girl's going to have so much popcorn and so many horror films in her system, I don't even think she's going to be able to handle it all kind of a thing. Uh, and I just thought that was kind of funny. I mean, and uh, I like how, like, she spilled something on her pants in one scene and, like, she gets stuck in the laundry room. And, you know, she, she had a spunky attitude to her. And I guess that's what I really liked about her in the original um, in the Rob Zombie one, Daniel Harris, who would actually play Jamie Stroh, Laurie's daughter in Halloween 4 and 5 in the originals, came back as uh, the Nancy Loomis character in the remake. Uh, that was kind of her return to the franchise. And the PJ Souls replacement, I don't know her name, uh, but I felt she handled it in a very similar fashion. She also uses the word totally a lot, so you know Rob Zombie was paying attention to the first film at least. Um, the two girls like to pick on Laurie a lot, which happened a lot in the original film also. And also, what was kind of a neat little homage, if you were really listening in the Rob Zombie one, is they actually do talk about Ben Tramer again, and in the original, Laurie said she has a crush on Ben Tramer. Did they ever show him the Rob Zombie's version? Well, in either version, they, they don't show okay. Ben Tramer, but, but they, they, they talk down. about him in both versions. Okay. Um, and it's much more brief in the Rob Zombie one, but they do talk about, you know, Laurie's big crush on this guy named Ben Tramer, though. Um... 
So I'm gonna let Seth talk about Laurie's friends and what he likes and doesn't like about both ver- both versions. So, um, you know, I guess uh, just you know trying to uh, you know give a brief synopsis about her friends. Um, I'm just gonna go into John Carpenter's version of her friends, and I thought those were really played out well. Um, they felt real. Um, definitely felt like babysitters. Um, had a little more character than Laurie because Laurie was more of the um, she was a you know was a person that paid attention to her studies and, um, you know, just kind of was just really good person. Um, but in regards to her friends, um, of course, you know, they had, a, you know, that, uh, it's like, Oh, Hey, you want to want to catch up and, uh, you know, do this, you know, they just, you know, they, they really felt like they were girlfriends mm-hmm. and that's, you know, what I loved about her friends. So in regards to Rob Zombie's version, I really don't remember a whole lot, but, um, I think they just kind of got more into the talk, like, you know, oh, Ben Tramer, oh, you want to have sex with him, or you want to, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. So, so they almost had dirtier thoughts in the remake. Yeah, exactly. But that, that was one thing that Rob Zombie seemed to consistently mm-hmm. do throughout the movie, too, is well, yeah, characters just, having uh, more dirtier thoughts than the, than the original. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we're going to talk briefly about this next one, you guys, uh, the portrayal of the Miles family, since we briefly talked about them earlier. Um, I just thought the Carpenter version, they felt more like an everyday family. The dad always had a suit on, at least from what I can tell. Like, he had a suit on in the opening scene. Mm-hmm. Um, the mom was like your everyday mom. She had a purse. She dressed up. She, you know, was in the kitchen working at times and stuff. And I liked how Michael Myers kind of felt like the abnormal kid in a normal family kind of a thing. Um, the sisters seemed normal. The older sister seemed normal at the time. So, once again, I felt more connected to it. Um... One thing that's kind of funny about the uh, portrayal of the Myers family and the Rob Zombie one is if you listen closely on the scene where Michael Myers' sister is in her room, she's playing the song Don't Fear the Reaper. And and if you listen closely in the original Halloween, uh, when Lori and her friend are driving down the street, they're playing Don't Don't Fear the Reaper in their car. Oh, okay. So, uh, and it's the same same version, same singer and everything. Like, it's the same song in both versions. Um, But like we Mm -hmm. talked about earlier, I mean, it just... The Myers family and the Rob Zombie one felt like a redneck, disconnected, mm-hmm. non-communicative family. Mm-hmm. And the mom was a stripper who was stripping to pay the bills, I guess. Mm-hmm. The dad was a drunk. He didn't do anything. And like the one, the, the original, where you know he was always dressed up. He was working. Mm-hmm. He, he, mm-hmm. he would bring the money to pay the bills and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I just didn't like how the sister felt like a, a slut at times. I mean, it just... Uh, and what's worse is the dad actually approves of her dirtiness like there's even a scene where he comments on it and stuff like that and it's just like he would have never said that in the john carpenter version <laughs> no so seth do you want to get into detail or have you already talked about that too um yeah i, I kind of already talked about it a little bit but um one thing i liked about um john carpenter's version of uh, michael's family um even though you don't get a whole he, he really doesn't go into a whole lot of detail about his family but um from the image you see like you know when his dad takes Michael's mask off and says, Michael, you know, what'd you do? And of course he's, you know, holding the butcher knife. But, uh, you know, you just felt like they were, you know, an actual family um, that were, you know, in, in, in like, you know, our modern, modern society. And they just felt real. Um, and the same thing with his mother. Now, I don't think, other than his parents showing them in the film, I don't think they, they showed anything out. Any of, any of other of his, uh, besides you know Laurie being the main character, but I think that was kind of really all they showed in, in, the, in the in John Carpenter's version. So. Well, like you see the sister like fooling around with the boyfriend, like when Michael mm-hmm. Myers is looking in, mm-hmm. and there's nothing, oh yeah, that's true. It's yeah, like that, well, that ev- was, every yeah, every funny. female teenager in a relationship is going to be like that. I mean, they're going to have their playfulness. They're going to talk about things. They're mm-hmm. going to you know fool around with the mask since it's Halloween time and everything else. Mm-hmm. And even though Rob Zombie did that too, just the fact that earlier in the film he developed her as kind of this very sleeping around with all the guys in school kind of a girl. Yeah, where well, like, you already well, have that, that yeah. feeling. I mean, you really don't necessarily need to sh- you know show it. I mean, you just already have that feeling that's yeah. going to happen. So, um, another thing we're going to talk about to you guys. I know it's pretty far into the video, but um, as far as the horror aspect of both films go, uh, I thought the music, the um, the Michael Myers mask, the mystery of Michael Myers' insanity, the use of light in dark areas, the kind of the theme of the creepiness of stalkers. 
um, and how the Halloween holiday can be viewed as scarcity. I thought was scary was a very all those things were useful elements within the John Carpenter version. Um, and I didn't like how, um, yeah, I don't look at it. Go through it here. Um, it was mostly just strong blood and gore images, uh, violent kid behavior, and um, they played off the theme like eyes of a psychopath at one point in the zombie version. And I just didn't like that um, they didn't really uh, gave an interpretable motivation for Michael Myers. Mm -hmm. So what are your, some of your concluding thoughts of the horror aspect of Seth? Mm -hmm. Um, both ver versions too. Uh, let me start with John Carpenter's version, and I thought that was definitely. Uh, um, it felt more like a horror film, um, down, even down like I said previously, like you know, to the visuals, to um, you know, the one day soundtrack that was composed by John Carpenter, which is freaking awesome. Um, just everything clicked. Um, even uh, you know their surprise of them, you know, were able to. You know, grab Donald Donald Pleasants, which, by the way, only had about like five days to film all of his parts in the film. So I believe actually before they they got to the ending, actually no, I believe they actually had to shoot the ending, um, like before they even finished the film, like you know. Well, actually, about, like, the, op the opening scene. Into production, I think. Well, the opening scene was actually the first, last scene they shot in production. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, that makes sense. So that means but, that the um, last scene was was filmed even before the opening. So scene just you know to wrap it up. Uh, John Carpenter's version, awesome. Uh, it felt like a horror film. Um, there were a lot of parts when I first saw it that really jumped out at me. Um, I think I really give thanks to um, you know John, John Carpenter's vision, not only as a director but also you know um, playing his music into the film because there were a lot of the jumpy moments, especially um, you know uh, who was the uh, girl like seen anything to life? Remember her boyfriend? Uh, P.J. Souls. Yeah. P well, anyways, P.J. Souls, her boyfriend, you know. Like when he opens up the closet and says, "Hey, come on out of there," you know, when Michael Myers comes out and jumps out at him, you know, you you you, you feel, you know, you know that crime taking place, and uh, and then it was kind of cool because like every time there's a violent scene going on, or you know, you just kind of have that creepy, um, you know, death like music, it's like durr, it's like so. Anyways, like any of those parts that the, that they would jump out. Um, it was just that was really well done. So, and what are some of your concluding thoughts on the Rob Zombie ver version of the film? Um, Rob Zombie, I remember it ended. Um, it, it was definitely a different ending than the first film, but um, the ending was definitely you know like Rob Zombie has done be, be uh, very consistent with his own style and you know this grudgy, real, realistic, and gory. Um, you know, it, it, I don't, it, there were a few scary moments, but that's probably because um, I believe Michael Myers was a little more intimidating maybe in this film, just because he was a lot more brutal. You know, he had blood all over his, you know, his his janitor, janitor uh, apparel, and um, you know, he just felt a lot more gritty. Um, but other than that, um, I don't think it was as, as scary. Um, really not as scary as uh, John Carpenter's version and uh, I think you know that, that kind of goes true to most other films that, that try to remake you know those usually for, you know fail miserably and uh, I don't think Rob Zombie's you know film failed miserably but I think in my book you know it still failed just because you know even though he tried to get into the origins of Michael Myers and try to be a little more realistic and trying to relate to you know today's audience um i just don't think you know it worked out it just, in my opinion i think maybe a lot of people who are new to the horror genre today maybe you know of course probably could have liked that film and maybe who people like rap zombies music of course like his film so but just to me um you know it was definitely bloody it was gory but really didn't um it, re it really wasn't scary to me and it was just more about Reminds me of Hostel, where Hostel wasn't, it wasn't um, scary, but you know it was definitely gory. So all in all, it sucked. <laughs> so overall, guys, if you're gonna watch one of the Halloween films, make sure it's the John Carpenter one. We both very much agree that the Carpenter version is better. Definitely. Um, so I hope you enjoyed this part, these three, this three-part video of our comparison.